There you go. There's the workstation. It's kind of cool because I can walk away and you can still hear me. So it's nice to have a mic for a change. Big old 16 pill. No screws. One of the things I hate about this box is that it's got all, mostly, not all, but a lot of old solder in it. And the stuff like doesn't, it's not the same. It's the new stuff. It's hard to work to see how long it took to heat that up. Anyway, uh, this box is blown to smithereens. Blown, blown. Almost blown, almost blown. Blown, 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 blown. Uh, blown, blown. So we know we've got at least two pills blown here. None of these quarter watts blue, so we don't know. I, I'm pulling everything out. I'm stripping this, I'm refurbishing this whole box. The entire box is getting refurbished. This is my old original 711 built. He calls them uh, high velocity. Um, it's really heavy. I'm gonna take the fans off. See how this thing's all beat up, scratches and everything. This baby's gonna get. Uh, if you, yeah, you can see all the scratches and everything. <clears throat> totally refurbished. I'm gonna sand it real good. I'm gonna feather fill it. I'll show you that when I do it sand it real good and it's gonna get a paint job this is my box I'm keeping it forever had it forever had it for like 30 years again I'd like to reiterate when when Paul made this box for us it never blew up once we ran it for 25 years with all Toshiba's the only reason it's all tore up and why we tore it up now is because um, 22 stole all the Toshiba's out for a 64 pill and ever since then we've been mix matching you know, we've made, this was a uh, two drive and 12 at one point. We, we, we just used it for whatever, whenever. <clears throat> this has become our mutt. But now I want to strip it down, make it a brand new 16 pill with all matching HG regular 2879s. And I want it to be all new and fresh. I'm going to run it in the garage um, on the beam. So this will be my base station box. That's my plan right now. So we're gonna start ripping. Where do I start? Gosh, you know it hurts to do it really. Look at this. <laughs> Look at this bad boy. I gotta take some good videos of this thing because I wanna put it back the way it is, you know. This looks like it might actually be a very good picture. Too. I can actually see the HGs and the values on there. You, you, if you look close, you'll notice there's C's, there's regulars, the different values. You name it, we slapped it in there when we had it. Whatever it took to, to keep talking. I'm not going to make it a C box. I'm going to convert it to a regular. I don't need C's, I don't bolt. Where do I start? There you have it. She's out. Now I can start stripping, which ooh, it's hard for me to do. But she's gonna be beautiful when we redo her, so just you know, it's like taking an old muscle car or something, stripping her down. It's hard, you know. It's, but I can't remember how I blew this thing up like, oh, I was in the garage. Something's wrong in the garage. I don't know if I got a bad coax, but I just kept talking. 
I just kept talking for like an hour. Smoke was coming out. And all these resistors kept blowing and stuff. But, you know, I should have filmed that. Oh. Um, but, yeah, so that's it for tonight. It's like, I don't know, 9.30 or something. I got to go to bed and work tomorrow. But we're, uh, we're off to the races. Catch you in the next one. Fortunately, it's the only one, but uh, it explains now why this box is malfunctioning in the garage. Pretty sure that's the reason. Okay, my friends, here's what we got. We got us a little sander. That's 220 on there. Do as much as I can with that and do the rest by hand. Because as you can see, this box is all scratched up. It's over 25 years old. Okay. My intention is to prime it, sand it, and paint it. Okay. I'm going to go with apple red. And this is the feather fill that I mentioned before. It's, we used to call it feather fill back in the day, you know, we're old. But it's this stuff here. Okay. And basically, it says here in the, it says, quickly repairs stone chips, paint scratches, and minor dents. 
bonds to primer, metal, fiberglass, and aluminum. Ready to sand in 20 minutes. So I basically, it's a two part. That's why I got this here. You can spread it on with this and mix it. But you know, you mix it like one and a half to one. Well, it's like one and a half to a half. And you just mix it up. And then you just, from my experience, a little bit of experience I have over the years, you just spread it on here, put a thin layer of it, it'll fill in all these scratches. You can see those scratches. It'll fill in all the scratches and dents and dings. And, and then you sand it lightly, just enough to make it smooth and for the primer to stick. And then you sand the primer and you paint it and it should turn out really, really nice. So that's what we're going to attempt to do today. Set up our little, I'm not feeling real energetic. I drove today, it's cold and damp. It's been drizzling all day. It's like 35 degrees with a, with a wind. And uh, I really don't even feel like doing this, but uh, you know, maybe we could do it for an hour or something, get something done. This thing's not gonna get done by itself. So without further ado, we'll set up the time lapse and rock and roll. Okay, that's it for tonight. I'm gonna let this stuff, it's, it doesn't feel like it's hard enough to sand. It's kind of, it's kind of cool out here. So, so I think all in all, it should turn out pretty nice. We're gonna find out. Fortunately, it's my box. So, you know, we can experiment. <laughs> that's it for tonight. Bye-bye. Okay, so I know it seems kind of crazy, right? I covered the whole thing, beat up, and then I basically sanded it all off. And the theory is, you know, my disc sander can only go flat on this metal, right? So any scrapes, gouges, and dents or whatever would be filled in with that feather fill, as I call it, that spot putty. And I would sand the, all the excess off, and those spots, see how you can see them? The theory is they're smooth now. They're filled in. I mean, they feel pretty smooth to, to my finger. You can see even like right here, see how there's like a ring around that? It's because it was like dented from the screw. So that's now filled in theoretically. So now you prime this and you paint this and it should look virtually new. That's, that's the theory. That baby's ready for primer as far as I'm concerned. She looks pretty darn nice. I don't know if the lighting does any good, but remember all those scratches you can see? You can see them there now, but you can't feel them anymore. It's pretty cool. I think this stuff actually works pretty good, but um, this side looks awesome. Top looks great. So, eh, we'll see. I don't think I can do it today because it's snowing out and I don't want to pull my son's car out in the snow and I don't want to paint in here because we made that mistake last year when we were working on 22 Suburban and we painted alternators and things in here on that vice there and uh, we pretty much destroyed the paint on this car 
we covered it and everything, but it still got on it. And we end up having to clay block the whole car twice to get all the overspray off of it. <laughs> Needless to say, my son does not want me to do that again. So anytime I do any kind of painting or priming or anything in here, I like to do it out here because I have heat and up here I have a vent. So, you know, you can set up a little area right here to hold your piece and you can turn on the vent and spray right here and it kind of sucks it out, you know, at least you don't get fumigated to death. But uh, um, I just gotta get his car out of here. I can't, I can't leave it in here. I can't do that again. That was bad. Okay, that's done. Got the door open, trying to put some air out. It's kind of a catch-22, because you want to keep it warm. Coldness could make it run too. So I got the heat going, got the heat blowing. Gotta get some of those fumes out here. You can see how much, look at the overspray on the ground there. All that would be sitting on Joey's car if I didn't take it out of here. <laughs> that's why, as you see, I got all my CB stuff covered up. <laughs> it's my CB in there, five bills in there, power supply. This is the lollipop under here. Don't want to paint that baby. I've had it for, I don't know, that might be my brother's original one from the 70s. I don't even know, because I know I never bought one. So I probably stole that from him too. <laughs> Maybe I did buy one. I got one from my buddy, bad news. Maybe that's that one, I don't know. 